Dobbins is a stud. Okay. Weeks three through six, he came back from the, the ACL tear. He suffered back in 2021 and he didn't rush more than 13 times in any of those games, but in the game where he did against Buffalo, 52% of the snaps, 13 carries ran 10 routes in that game, four receptions that tied a season high. And then 63 total yards, two touchdowns finishes the running back 10. He still struggled with his knee weeks five and six. And so he took some weeks off, got that extra surgery, rested, recovered, re and came back week 14 through 17 on a tear three, the last four weeks of the regular season, J.K. Dobbins, 93 or more total yards. And he had a touchdown during that stretch. He finished as running back 10, 19, 40, and 28 during that four-game span and never got more than 50% of the snaps. So J.K. Dobbins is a player that, that I'm keeping my eye out. What are the Baltimore Ravens going to do with their backfield? Because we saw Kenny and Drake get some get some run and, and have a couple spike weeks while J.K. Dobbins was out. We saw Gus Edwards have a couple spike weeks uh, and some volume. There were two games where J Gus Edwards had 16 carries in J.K. Dobbins' absence. But once Dobbins came back from the extra surgery, he had no fewer than 12 carries. And he got a couple targets. He got sprinkling of targets during that span as well. But especially in week, uh, not just week 17, but in week 19, okay, which is actually the playoffs, if you want to think about it that way, uh, J.K. Dobbins, four receptions, five targets, 105 total yards against the Bengals in that uh, wild card weekend. He had the touchdown, 20.5 PPR fantasy points. That's exactly what we wanted to see. It was his highest scoring game of the season. And yes, there was some criticism about J.K. Dobbins not getting enough carries, but he had 13 carries and five targets, 18 opportunities. That was the most opportunities of the entire year. So yeah, he, he could have carried more, but he already carried the most of the year. He was used the most. So I could see how J.K. Dobbins could be a little upset and only 13. I do like to see that he had four receptions for the second time on the season. And another thing you want to be encouraged by for J.K. Dobbins is true yards per carry, 5.2. That was fourth among all running backs, ninth in yards per touch, second in juke rate. That's an indicator that a running back is willing to make cuts while he's running and that he's doing it at that high rate. He's trying to avoid defenders. So that's important as well. He's not taking as many hits. He's trying to avoid defenders. And in fact, J.K. Dobbins, the third highest breakaway run rate in the NFL among all running backs. But this was, he had the third highest breakaway run rate, but he had the second most defenders in the box on average. And he had the highest stacked front carry rate of all running backs. So he was facing a ton of defenders and breaking away from them because of this juke rate. That's Nick Chubb type of running. That's Derrick Henry type of running. Dobbins has the capability and the upside of getting into that like Nick Chubb type of upside. We're talking running back one, but is he going to get the volume that we want, right? Can he get consistently 15 plus carries? If the answer is yes, then he's a running back one, even if he doesn't get you know, those three, four, five targets a game. If he only gets two targets or one target a game, he still can be that, especially if Lamar Jackson is still on this Baltimore Ravens offense. So uh, we, we want to be in on J.K. Dobbins, I think, for 2023. Because let's switch gears and talk about his backfield mate for this season, 